Imagine unearthing your own time capsule. Would you open it up? Or would you be nervous about revisiting your younger self? Photographer Ron Habib wants to help you open up your time capsules. He's asking for old rolls of undeveloped film for a website he's building. The project is called Lost Rolls America. I found this roll of film, which literally was on a metal spool. So I knew it was like, that must be old because nothing really comes on metal spools with a rubber band around it. And then I heard about um, the Lost Rolls project on NPR and I was like, well, I might as well send it. And uh, you never know. And then I was able to see these pictures jump up at me. My first thing was like, this is crazy. Like, this is impossible. And then of course I shared it with my family. And that's kind of where the, you know, just our conversation started. It's like something coming back from the past. This is my mom, Valentina. Um, her maiden name was Kuzubov. And this is 1950 in Ravensburg, Germany. This picture opened up a lot of conversations about the geography of, of, of the, the travel and about the feelings in people's faces. I was able to talk to my uncle because he has a tooth missing and he told me he was in a brawl over a girl, you know. I never, I never heard those stories. It's a lot more vivid when you could put an image in front of your son and say, hey, this is the grandma that you know. Uh, this is her when she was 18 years old, rather than sort of recounting it in much more vague terms. We would have a lot of conversations trying to piece the puzzles together of all the stories that we've heard or, or kind of also disagree about. Well, I remember it this way. I remember grandma saying it this way. My mother was born in 1931, so she is 80 seven and was diagnosed with metastatic cancer starting from her breasts in 2004. But she was so strong. I mean, she just would, she would go to chemotherapy and they were all thinking she was fragile. And then a week later, she's off to Paris. It never stopped her. She loves life. Valentina, definitely, she loves life so much. When my mom first saw the photograph, she just like smiled and it was blissful and, and very, it was very joyous. Like, oh, you know, I, I remember that. Oh yeah, my goodness, I'm going to America. Oh, I'm myself. And you know, I left my family when I was a pretty independent person. And so uh, I was really so sad to meet my mother and my sister, my auntie and my brother. My goodness, uh, Kuzubova was my last name. So happy that they're getting rid of me. <laughs> The older sister, you know, that I was the oldest one. You were bossy? Yes, Nina. Here, this is the boss. It was almost like she was talking about somebody else when she was talking about herself then and how, you know, she was leaving a, uh, no, she said, I was the boss. That's the first thing she said, see? <laughs> so she really liked being the boss and she was, she knew she was leaving a boy behind and the boyfriend came to say goodbye to me in the railroad station and I kissed him. And he said, oh, now I understand why you didn't want to kiss before, because you wanted to have a, <laughs> to, give a to give me a kiss on the train. I wanted to go, even if it was my family, my mother, and said, I wanted to experience a new life in America, uh, which was unknown. I didn't know any English at the time. 
She was leaving her family behind. She really wanted to be independent. And so I saw the connect connectivity that that was, that was her nature and it's, you know, still is. Our boat landed in New Orleans. We were given $150 each. We thought that was a real, real um, a huge sum. And there we took a train to New York and $150 was enough plenty. My aunt and I, we were asked to become house workers in two families, one in one and one in another. And this lady that I worked for, and she taught me how to wash the Venetian blinds, which I've never seen in my life. And then some words in English, because she was good enough. But when I went to California, that was through the university. Suddenly, I met Russian friends who were all university professors or students, a, a whole community, taking courses, learning English, the structure of stories, and later on the structure of literary uh, works. That was the very beginning. I started uh, teaching theater and producing a plays uh, over at the San Francisco College for Women. My mother, when she arrived in the United States, she came with her aunt, and that's Maria Kuzubova. Uh, and so that trunk, as well as these suitcases, came with them on the journey from Europe to the U.S. When they left Latvia in 1950, they took all their belongings. So the suitcase traveled with them, going to the north of Germany, over in the boat, through New Orleans, and landed in San Francisco. That roll of film was in the suitcase, in the basement, since the 1950s. There was a lot of history just in the item itself, in that it's, you know, it's made out of a flimsy tin or aluminum material. It has labels on there that provide sort of, you know, evidence of the trip that they took and where they arrived and where they were going. And it also reminds you that, you know, that's essentially all the materials that they came with when they first got here, which, you know, one suitcase doesn't hold that much stuff. Latvia was a, a very comfortable country, but then suddenly uh, the communist Russia took over Latvia. And that was the end of the good period because we were not accepted there anymore. And uh, uh, the communist country was taken over with their rules. Everything was nationalized, they called it. That means taken away from you, not being any more part of your family or your, uh, yourself. And that was pretty, uh, uh, pretty hard to, be, to believe and accept, you know. Suddenly you're not like nobody. They came to our house and uh, in the middle of the night at two o'clock and uh, said to my father, we need specialists like you. And my mother came and said, children are sick. And then one of the soldiers came to me with a flashlight, and I was in bed, 10 years old. I said, are you sick? And I said, no. And then they said, how about your brothers and sisters? And I said, yes. And that's what saved us. You see, uh, and they left uh, my mother and the four children, and, uh, and that we would uh, follow him in 10 days. Many, many people were thrown into those trains to go to Siberia and for working as a working uh, crew. And so my father, you know what he did? 
In one of the rounds, he threw out the window a little piece of paper, saying, uh, do not follow us. He had one little song that I remember, and, uh, and nobody will find my grave. And you know, when I was still in the it didn't make any sense. But now, you know, many years later, we, we lived that, that nobody ever found his grave. И никто не узнает, где могилка моя. My mother was waiting for my father for 10 years. You know, every night, oh, he is coming home. But he was already dead uh, after one year. And, uh, but he was sort of present in our family for uh, 10 years at least. The history that's associated with the Second World War and this past century and the migration that occurred and the struggles that people went through is one that I think is, is always timely. So, you know, you, you could be talking about migration that occurred post-Second World War and, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's an, not an isolated story. There's migration occurring uh, in present day, maybe from other countries or maybe for other reasons, but there's a lot to be learned from these experiences of moving from across the world to try and make a new life. Nothing really matters unless we have these conversations, unless we have these pictures to remind us, you know, what, what is the essence of our existence? What's the meaning of life? You need some kind of reminder like this. I think the magic is that it's actually from a roll of film. One thing is seeing the picture and another thing is being able to, to talk to somebody about it. It makes it very, very special.